You know, none of us really want to talk about hearing loss, but understanding what it is and having questions answered early can be very critical. Back to help guide us along the way is Dr. Jody Conter and Dr. Rachel Conter from Gardner Audiology. Welcome, ladies. How are you? Nice to be back. Thank you for having us. I will say I have learned so much about hearing loss and hearing in general. So first, a big thank you for being back on the show. And this one is very interesting, and, and I'm learning more as we talk. Hearing loss and the effect it can have on memories. You're saying there's a correlation that people really need to talk about, right? There's absolutely a lot of research now that is focused on this. John Hopkins, uh, University of Colorado, Boulder, um, National Institute of Health, they're all showing direct correlation between untreated hearing loss and memory issues. And I will say you brought up all the information. I know someone who spent a lot of time studying in school about this was well, Dr. Rachel here. And, and Rachel, what are your thoughts about this? I mean, what is the, why are they hand in hand? Why are you seeing memory loss happen with people who are suffering from hearing loss as well? It's a great question. So the thought behind it um, is that the, when you're struggling to hear, it's taking valuable resources away from other areas in the brain that you can dedicate to thinking and memory. Um, so when a person has untreated hearing loss, they're straining. And not only is it taking away those resources, but it's actually tiring too. So at the end of the day, they're tired and not hearing as well. Studies have shown that there's been reorganization in the brain, so different parts of the brain are responding when they're not getting that access to sound. So that's why we're really wanting to look at this area. So sometimes you may be chalking up that a loved one is just not hearing, but in reality they're hearing maybe not just memory. So are we talking about short-term memory here or what parts of the brain are being affected? So the, one of the neatest studies that I have seen show, has shown the reorganization of the brain where the auditory cortex, which is responsible for following conversation, when you have hearing loss, it shifts the focus to the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is responsible for memory. And so if we're taxing it with a different job, it's not doing the job it's supposed to do. And follow-up research shows within six weeks of starting to wear hearing aids that focus is shifting back to the auditory cortex again. So we're actually more elastic than we give ourselves credit for. And while it could start out as short-term memory, it could develop into more long-term memory issues as well. So it is something that we want to address as early as possible to keep the brain stimulation. You use it or lose it. I mean, if we're not stimulating the brain, if we look at also, like if you have hearing loss in both ears and you only put a hearing aid in one ear, only one half of the brain is being stimulated. So people ask all the time about that. Should I wear hearing aids in both ears? We have two ears for a reason. And when they both work together, they're playing a very, very important part in stimulating our brain. So absolutely. Well, you're talking about hearing aids then. I'm assuming hearing aids can fix this problem and kind of retrain the brain, if you will. Um, in a way, yes. So it's first of all important. That's why we should all get our hearing tested. That's the best way to tell if you have a hearing loss and what can we do to help that. If hearing aids are indicated, they can help keep those areas of the brain active and healthy so that we can try to prevent it as much as possible. Um, that's why having a proper examination with an audiologist is kind of the first step to see what we can do and where to go from there. We're not saying that hearing aids will prevent no. Alzheimer's or dementia, but we're hoping that hearing aids will keep the brain more stimulated to keep it more active so that we are stimulating memory. So maybe not preventing, but maybe holding off some of those memory issues that sometimes can be related to dementia. I have seen dramatic improvement in patients. One of my favorite memories about this was a gentleman who came in with Alzheimer's, came in with his wife and daughter, and he was combative. He was mm -hmm. physically combative. I tested his hearing. He turned out to have a moderately severe hearing loss, had never worn hearing aids. The day I fit him and I turned his hearing aids on, he went from sitting like this <sighs> to sitting like this. He, the immediate relaxation in him was, his, his family was just, oh my gosh did so much better after he could hear what was going on around him. If you can't hear, you're not, you're gonna be, you're gonna isolate, yeah. you're gonna isolate yourself, you're gonna be frustrated and tense, and people don't know, well, how much of this is coming from the Alzheimer's? How much is coming from the hearing loss? A lot of it can come from 
being isolated because of hearing loss. So. Well, Dr. Conters, we'll call you plural in that <laughs> sense, mother and daughter, if you couldn't tell there. Thank you so much for coming in. I really, really appreciate it. And if you want more information and you want to get your hearing checked, well, just be sure to visit their website, give them a call. And of course, there's multiple Tampa Bay locations to better serve everybody.